everyone, my name is Teresa and I'm a volunteer naturalist at Bernheim Arboretum and Research Forest. And I'm gonna to talk to you today a little bit about how you can detect signs of wildlife. Here at Bernheim, we have wildlife all over the place. Many, much of it you can find all over the state of Kentucky as well as maybe in your own backyard. There are three key ways that you can detect signs of wildlife no matter where you are. The first key way is through visual and physical evidence. As humans, we rely heavily on our sense of sight. So the first thing we tend to do is look for physical clues that animals leave behind for us to detect that they have been through that forest or through our neighborhoods. Some examples of those signs could be like things like feathers or sometimes in late spring, you might even be able to see little eggshells that have been cracked and have fallen along grassy areas or maybe along the sides of forests. Another neat item is bones and even sometimes shells like this box turtle shell. I think these are neat because bones not only tell us that this animal, like the steer bone, has been through the area, but maybe even its predator has been through its area too. So it could be a sign that maybe coyotes or vultures have been around as well. Another fun way to detect signs of wildlife through physical examples are prints. So this is an example of a bear paw print, um, but it's going to range quite widely in terms of what types of prints animals leave behind. A bear print is going to be very different from a print that maybe a deer or an opossum is going to leave. So it's a great way for you to be able to tell exactly which animal has been through your area. Prints are great because you can find them in all different types of elements as well. Prints are easily found right after rainstorms when they leave prints into the mud but sometimes you can find great prints, maybe just after a snowfall or in the autumn or spring when you have that frost in your grass. And if you have maybe a rabbit or a squirrel that's kind of gone through your yard. Another great way to see signs of wildlife is through your sense of hearing. When you step outside, I'm sure there's gonna be some sounds we're all familiar with, right? So maybe the rattle of a cicada, for example, or the familiar chirp of maybe a chickadee who sings its song quite frequently in the spring. But we have to enhance our sense of hearing because remember, animals in the wild have very sensitive hearing. So often they'll hear us coming far before we ever see or hear them. So we wanna use that to our advantage by using their trick to help us to detect them. And one of those key ways is by helping to enhance our sense of hearing. When I think of an animal that has sensitive hearing, I think of a deer. So I'm gonna create deer ears to help key in to some noises that maybe I haven't paid attention to before. And how you do that is by cupping your hands, put them behind your ears, stand still and listen. And if you pay attention, you might hear maybe the hoot of an owl far away, or maybe the bark of a fox or a coyote over the hill. You'll suddenly start hearing sounds that maybe you've never heard before. Hearing different sounds in the wild is really important because most wildlife is going to be heard instead of seen. So it's a really important skill to develop if you are out looking for signs of wildlife in your neighborhood and even in the forests. The third key way of looking for wildlife is through a sense of smell. Now, when you think of an animal that you can smell, what is the first one you think of? I bet you it's gonna be a skunk, right? Our very great striped friends often are the first animals that we're gonna smell wherever we are, be it in an urban setting or out in the woods. Skunks can spray a quite pungent odor up to 10 feet away. And depending on which way the wind blows, you can smell them over three miles away. So they are definitely the predominant animal that develops a smell that may or may not be good. But there are other animals that develop smells that we might be able to detect. Another great example is if you're out in the woods or in a grassy area and you smell a musty skunk-like odor that's not quite as strong, it's possible you might be in fox territory. Red foxes mark their areas, and if you're in an area where they've just recently passed, it's a great way to tell if they're close to you. So I know I've provided you with a lot of information, so let's quickly wrap up some info. Um, so again, some few ways that you can detect wildlife in your area is first through those physical signs and clues 
that animals leave behind, like their bones and shells. Second is through sound and our sense of hearing. Remember, put your deer ears on. And third is through our sense of smell. So keep that nose peeled for all the different smells that you're gonna experience while out in the woods. And remember, if you find physical clues of wildlife, please leave it where you found it. Don't take it with you. Leave no trace, okay everyone? Thank you for joining me for this lesson. I hope you have a great day.